This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated with another true crime of insurance fraud video story. This one, number 60, is called My Paintings Were Stolen. Of course, this was a real story and the names and places are changed to protect the guilty. Lucky Ambrose was about to retire as a flight attendant with Italian International Airlines. His retirement pay would allow him to live, barely, in Barstow, California. On a layover in Rome, he found a means to retire in comfort while browsing the Vatican Art Museum. He purchased a disposable flash camera at the souvenir shop and started snapping photographs of works of art in the museum. Of the twelve pictures he took, two came out relatively clear, marred only by a blotch of white from the flash reflecting off the oils. They were pictures called San Giorgio Ceoside il Drago, Paris Bardone's 1525 painting of St. George slaying the dragon, and Madonna della Pera, painted by Alessandro Buonosino, known as Moretto Diana Brescia in 1505. Two weeks later, Ambrose retired to his three-bedroom ranch home in Barstow that he had purchased five years before as a weekend retreat in the desert that he expected to use as his retirement home. He built in the garage where workshop two thin wooden crates that looked like they would hold a large Renaissance painting. He called his local insurance agent with Good Neighbor Insurance Company, and informed the agent that before he retired from Italian International Airlines, he had acquired two old Italian masters. He showed the agent, Albert Dufus, the two crates with the photos stapled to the crates. The insurance agent saw the two sealed crates. Instead, the paintings are inside the crates, Ambrose said, undergoing a chemical treatment to protect them from light and humidity. They cannot be seen. To open the crate would cause them damage. Well, I need appraisals or some evidence of your ownership of the paintings, Doofus asked. Of course, replied Ambrose. Here is a description and valuation of Death of the Dragon by Dominican Domenico Girondaio, and Madonna con Bambino by Piero Diana Francesca. The agent accepted what he was given without question. A policy was issued immediately valuing the two paintings at $205,000 and $350,000 respectively. Ambrose did not tell the agent that the valuation was prepared on a computer at his local FedEx store and had no relation to reality. Since it was written in Italian, Dufus was certain it was authentic. Three days later, Ambrose reported a burglary at his Barstow home and made claim for $555,000. Good Neighbor Insurance Company, faced with a claim loss of two Italian Renaissance paintings stolen from the bedroom of his California ranch house, thought they had no choice but to pay the amount of the policy. They were only suspicious as the claim contained multiple red flags of fraud like, one, the loss was in three weeks of the issuance of the policy. Two, there was no written evidence that the items were purchased by the insured. Three, the items were unusual and hard to market, while his TV, VCR, and stereo system were still in the house after the burglary. And four, the only proof of ownership Ambrose offered when uh, he insured the works were the two amateurish snapshots of the paintings. Suspicions and red flags are not enough to deny a claim. Lucky Ambrose was paid what he asked and signed a subrogation and salvage agreement assigning all of his rights to the paintings to the insurance company. 
the company launched an investigation to locate the stolen paintings by its subrogation and salvage department. Contact was made with registers of stolen art. Police departments across the world were made aware of the theft. The Carabinieri, the Italian State Police, located two paintings identical to those in the photographs at the Vatican Art Museum, where they had been for centuries. Ambrose was con contacted by agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, who had learned of the true location of the paintings in his photos from the uh, Italian Arma dei Carbonari, art theft unit. Lucky Ambrose, the retired Italian International Airlines employee, was asked if he intended to swindle good neighbor insurance by claiming that the paintings were his and were stolen. He told the FBI agents he had no such intent. He thought he had the original paintings and asked that they be insured for the values he believed he had acquired. The FBI presented their findings to the U.S. Attorney in Riverside, California. The U.S. Attorney found their evidence inadequate to allow him to keep his 100% conviction rate and refused to indict Ambrose. Good Neighbor Insurance believed it had enough evidence and sued Ambrose to recover the money they had paid for what Good Neighbor was sure was now obviously a fraudulent claim. At trial for insurance fraud to recover the money paid, an expert called by Ambrose's lawyer testified about the justification for his actions. Can you imagine Good Neighbor coming to your house and insuring your house without ever having an appraiser look at it. The expert and art professor at the College of the Desert in Palm Springs testified that although he had no knowledge of how insurance is written, they should have never insured those paintings based only on a photograph and that the photographs showed true old master paintings. The insurance agent who visited Ambrose's house in Barstow testified he believed Ambrose when he was told that the paintings were inside the crates. We're in a business of utmost good faith, he said. Why shouldn't I believe him? He had paid his premium regularly for the last five years. If the agent had any question about it, if he didn't feel that everything was in line before he issued the insurance, we would have taken steps necessary to ensure it was genuine. A good neighbor's spokesman testified. The good neighbor's spokesman also testified that when the paintings were reported stolen only three weeks after the policy was issued, they had suspicions. But having no proof or anything to base an assumption that something was wrong, we had to go ahead and pay the claim. The jury returned a verdict in favor of good neighbor for the amount paid, interest at the legal rate, and attorney's fees. The state of California investigated whether to arrest Ambrose, but emulated the actions of the U.S. attorney. He could have gone to jail. His retirement plans could have been destroyed by an Italian cop who knows art better than the agents, underwriters, and claims people at good neighbor insurance company. Lucky sold his house in Barstow and moved to Boise, Idaho, before the state of California and the U.S. attorney had time to change their minds. He now lives a quiet and honest life on his retirement pay in Boise and is trying to get used to snow in the winter. And good neighbor is out $555,000 because... They had no way to collect on their judgment from Lucky, whose house in Idaho is now homesteaded and can't be attached, and who has put away in a safe place the money he received from Good Neighbor. This video was adapted from my book, Insurance Fraud Costs Everyone which is a supplement to my two-volume treatise on insurance fraud, second edition, and my newest book, 
insurance fraudsters deserve no quarter, all of which are available as Kindle books, paperbacks, and some hardcovers from Amazon.com. If you found this video interesting or useful to you, please click on the like button if you watched it on YouTube and the rumble button if you watched it on rumble.com. Thank you for your attention.